All right, gang, and it's about that time. We've got V2 out for Affinity Photo. Now, I don't do a lot of in-depth, realistic photo editing, so I found three things in the new software that I can use in my workflow on a daily basis, and I'd like to share them with you in terms of how I apply them. So, while there are bigger and better tutorials out there done by Affinity for 45 minutes that show you all of the features, I'm gonna show you the top three that I found beneficial when I went through the software. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All righty, gang, and welcome to my top three new tools here, or upgrades, however you want to look at it, in the Affinity Photo V2 upgrade. Why only three? Because Affinity did a really good 45-minute video on everything, and I only wanted to speak to the tools that I use in my editing flow because they're the ones that I know best. So for me, there were three things that came about in this new upgrade that I think are pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one is the ability to jump back and forth in RAW and the photo persona. So when you shoot RAW, it used to be that you would develop it and then that would be the end of it. It was destructive. You could never go back to that RAW file. Now, when you open this RAW file, you have the option. They're gonna ask you for the output. If you choose the pixel air, that will be it you will never be able to go back to RAW. I personally like to embed the RAW file in my Affinity Photo files. So let's go ahead and do just real quick, two simple edits. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna straighten this thing. Once I straighten it, I'm gonna have to crop it. You know how it goes. So we're gonna crop it just like that. Now let's add some clarity, kick up the contrast, call it a day. All right, so I'm gonna kick up the contrast a little bit, up the clarity of this. I really wanna see that choppy water. Let's go ahead and add a curve for a little bit of dynamic. All right, yeah, up the lights a little bit, darken the darks, make it look a little bit dynamic. That looks good. All right, now watch this. Traditionally, you would hit the develop button. Let's do it. All right, now, we're now in the photo persona. Let's go ahead and add a real simple lens filter. Give it that nice kind of orangey, you know, calm look. Now, here's the trick. You want to put your lens filter above the image. And here's why. To get back to the raw, there are two ways. One, you can come back to the develop persona or two, you can click on the image. Let's click on the image. Now, you see that the orange haze here went with it. If you click off show layers, now you can see the raw file without any of your edits that were done in photo. Or you can see the raw with the edit that was done. It's your choice. Now let's develop it again. Now watch what happens when you link the lens filter and you nest it inside. Now the lens filter is inside. Let's click on the image. Now let's turn off the show all layers. Notice that the orange filter stays. Doesn't matter how many times you click it, it's not going anywhere. So let's develop. In order to make that raw thing work where you don't see the images changes that you did here, you must have these above that image. So this is huge. So you can go back in, re-edit your raw. We can kick up the black point a little bit if we want. We'll put it crazy here. Develop it in. And then when we come back to the image, it will show in the photo persona. All right, that is big deal one. I don't do a lot of raw editing, but I do enjoy doing the raw editing. And then it dis it's just disappointing when you go back and you can't go back to it. So this is a huge upgrade for me. Now the second thing that I would consider to be a huge upgrade is the non-destructive mesh warp. The old school would have the tool here with the mesh warp tool and it was always destructive. So right here I've just got a simple beer bottle. We're going to come down here and I'm going to nest this inside of the curve. Now, I know that this isn't a great image in terms of it's a little bit blurry. That's fine. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this work a little bit. We're going to center up the image on the bottle. And now what I'm going to do on that image, I'm going to come down to layer, live filter layer, distort, mesh warp. And now I'm ever so slightly just going to tweak this thing out a little bit so that it works. Perfect. All right. So that really is non-destructive mesh warp. And you see right here, there's the mesh warp. Turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. Up to you. This is nice as somebody that does a lot of mock-ups. I really like having this as a non-destructive option. All right. So the third and final one, probably the most convoluted one was the improvements they made to the displacement technique. Now, what is displacement? Let's say we have this image and we want to make it look like it's on the brick wall. So what we have to do here, the old displacement didn't quite look right. The new displacement doesn't quite look right, but it looks a little more right, if you know what I mean. So in order to work with this, first of all, I had to create a displacement map. So what I did is I copied the image, I used a black and white filter, cranked up the levels, and I added about four pixels of blur. What a displacement map does, Affinity reads the whites and the darks, and it says, for these areas, we push it out this far. We displace it this much. This is how you get an image to look like it's on a brick wall. So the first thing I did is I created this as a PNG and I saved it on my desktop. The second thing we're going to do now is I'm going to come down and I'm going to go to layer, live filter layer, distort, displace. Now notice the displacement layer is inside and attached to the logo. I'm going to load my map from a file. Okay, so I'm just going to come over here. We're going to look for the brick. Where's the brick? Right here. All right. Now you see it's starting to read. We're going to crank up the displacement a little bit here until we get it right about where we want it. And I think that right here at about Let's go 13 pixels. That'll work. Now, traditionally, you're going to have to still blur it. So we're going to come over here. You're still going to have to blur it by about one pixel because it still is a bit choppy. So it's closer to good and it's closer to passable. I really like this area over here. I think that that looks really nice in terms of how the circle's working. I like a lot about this, so it's better. All right, so from my perspective, these are the three things that I liked. I liked the improvement to the displacement. I liked the live filter layer for the warp mesh, and I liked the ability to jump back and forth in RAW. A lot of the other stuff I may find a use for someday, but for right now, it's just not there. So we did include a link to the Affinity uh, the affinity video they do 45 minutes and they walk you through everything i just didn't want to speak to what they did because i'm not the best in that position i wanted to give you the three that i use in this v2 upgrade